When it comes to getting a filmic look in your color grading process, a lot more goes into it than you actually think. It's not as simple as slapping on your favorite Fuji or Kodak LUT. You see, with analog film and different cameras that people used to use in the past, you would get specific types of characteristics. Dust and scratches from a dirty camera, halation from the reflection of light off the back of the camera, film grain, gate weave on Super 8 film, and so much more. Now my friends over at Dehancer asked me if I want to try out their film emulation plugin, being that I've been doing my film emulations manually. Over the past two years, I've taken endless colorist courses, and as much as I enjoy the film emulation process, doing it manually really slows my workflow down. So I wanna show you guys today how you can customize and use Dehancer for yourself to get different looks. You don't need to always use every single option. And that's my favorite part about this. The fact that it's completely customizable, there's different tools or effects that we can use, or if we don't feel like using them, we don't have to use them. At the end of the day, we could still get a unique look and have some sort of film characteristics. So let's waste no more time. Let's check out the clips that I've selected for this tutorial on how to use Dehancer. And I'll show you guys my basic workflow when it comes to my coloring process and also using Dehancer. So let's get into Dehancer. It's normally found in your effects tab right here. I already have it dropped on. And what we're going to do is just click on it, turn it on. So we're gonna start with our input. Now our input, we have different options. We could pick Rec. 709, 2020, Asus, Y Gamut, Cineon, Film Log, or there's a choose camera option like a CST. So I like to use that. This specific clip I filmed on an FX3, the boxing one's on an FX6, so I'll show you those. So we pick our camera for the Sony. They have a ton of different cameras that you could have on here. They're constantly updating it as well. We have the 7.3, 4R3, S3, FX3, 6, and the ZV-1. We pick the FX3, and then we have our format options. So whether you use S Gamut Cine 3, you have those options. So I did S Log 3, S Gamut 3, Cine, ISO 640. So they even give you the ISO options for the native ISO in camera, whether it's 640, 12,800, that's camera specific. So after I go ahead and add the Dehancer and do my CST in Dehancer, what we could do is adjust from here. We have exposure compensation, that's gonna brighten or darken your image. We have our temperature compensation, just like how you would do it in DaVinci, but now you have it over here. You could push the temperature to warm or cool. We have our tint compensation, same thing, magenta green, which is nice. We have our defringe and our fring defringe radius. Now defringe or fringing is chromatic aberration. What that is, is that green and that purple that you see at your high contrast points, whether it's a bright highlight meeting something contrasty and darker. You see it a lot in stills and certain lenses. It's not the most flattering thing, but you do have the option to toggle that on and off and adjust it from there, which is dope. Now, what I like to do personally is I like to, after I set up what camera I'm using, I like to dial in my primaries a little bit. If I toggle this off, this is what Dehancer's looking like. It's looking very flat still, but I mean, it's getting in the right ballpark. So all I simply did right here was pushed in some more contrast, which we'll be able to do in Dehancer as well, which I'll show you guys. Made a couple tweaks, nothing really crazy, but just trying to get my image in the ballpark where I want it to be. You can see that there's some clipping, my scopes are raised up a little bit, but as I work the Dehancer and show you guys step-by-step step the options that I'm doing, the scopes are gonna look way better. Stick with me. Next up, we have the film tab. The film tab, for those of you that shoot analog, you guys are gonna have a blast. I mean, you have all the different stuff. Cine still, Fuji, Fuji Chrome, Kodak Ektachrome, 2383, Eastman. I mean, you have Porta 400, 800. Basically, all the film that you wanna pick from, more or less it's gonna be here. I like the Agfa Color 100 
We're gonna enable this and put it on. Pick different ones. I'm just gonna show you different options. It's not looking the best. Don't worry, we will get there. But then you also have a push and pull option. The push and pull option is basically emulating the print process of film. So essentially, I'm just referring to the practice of under or over processing your film in order to force that film ISO or ASA to a specific look that you want. Those of you that develop your own film or shoot film stills or even video, you guys know what I'm talking about. Now we have expand. Expand allows you to target your black and white points. You could adjust them to how you want. So if I go ahead and enable it first, that should be a, a given. You can see that we can adjust here, our whites all the way up or down. Same with the black points. We could bring them down. We could fade them out, which is really cool. And then we have options on whether or not we want just the Luma, which is your highlights, your blacks, your shadows, nothing with color being adjusted. Or if you click on normal, it's going to allow you to just overall adjust the entire image, including the luminance of the colors. Pretty straightforward. So now that I have my black and white points where I like them, now we have our print option. And this is going to emulate the type of paper that you would be printing on. You have Kodak 2383, Fujifilm 3513. We even have Kodak Endora glossy paper. And if I click on each one, they have different looks. Not only do they have different looks, but once again, we could adjust our white point. Now our target white is going to be once again, more like a white balance option. If you could look at the scopes right here in the bottom right corner, if I push it to the right, it starts balancing out. If I pull it to the left, clearly the red channel is winning. So that's warmer. This just gives you more options because like I said, the more you do, the more different things start to shift and change and to bring it back to the look that you want, you have your options. We have um, exposure EV right there. So that could be adjusted as well. We have our tonal contrast. So this is just pushing contrast into the image. Once again, emulating film though. So it's not doing the same exact thing as your normal contrast adjustment over here. We have our color density. Color density is kind of like saturation. It seems to work differently when you use it. I don't know how to explain it, but it just overall has a different feel to it, which is really cool. And then we have lastly, the saturation slider that's super straightforward. And then lastly, we have our analog range limiter. Being that digital has more dynamic range than analog does, we can even check that off. And what that'll do is even compress our dynamic range to force it closer to analog. So if you really want to go crazy, you can. I love the different options that are available. So next up, we have our color head. What the color head option allows you to do is emulate subtractive color elements that are in your film process. Like I said, those of you who shoot on film, you know what this is about. I believe it has to do with the printer. I've done some research on it. But what we could do is you could just have more adjustments with the colors. You could push it towards blue or yellow. We have our magenta and green. And then we have our cyan and red. You could also group them together and overall push them. And if you notice, there's some really cool looks that you could get. It's almost like split toning an image, basically. You can push certain ranges and really get unique characteristics, colors, looks using the Dehancer. I, I don't know how else to explain it. If you wanna get quick, unique, filmic looks, Dehancer's where it's at. We have our grain right here. Could adjust the amount, the size of it. Could go really crazy. If we play it back, I mean, you could see it moving. It's there. We have our size, our mount, our film resolution with it. So this adjusts the resolution of the grain. You can adjust the grain in the shadows. 
And if you push it or pull it, notice how my shadows are even lifting if we look at the scopes, which is cool. We have our mid-tone adjustment as well, and you could see that the scopes are changing. Highlights, I mean, you can really dial it in the chroma. And one of my favorite things about the grain, let me reset these real quick, is the fact that not only can we add grain, but we have options on what side of it that we want to add the grain to. We could do it on the negative side, like regular film, and that's where normally the grain comes from, or the positive side, which a lot of you guys that are adding grain in post, that's what you're doing. So I love using that. You have analog option that emulates film once again. We have digital experimental, just a different look, different feel. To me, the only gripe I have with the grain option is even with the lowest amount, sometimes it's still too much for me. So hopefully in the future, Dehancer, if you guys are watching this, I love this plugin a lot. Let's get some more um, flexible range with the film grain. Maybe I just want a touch of it. So my next two favorite tools in this plugin on top of like the different film stock options and stuff like that is halation and bloom as a colorist this could be very tedious dialing in halation making it look as organic and real as possible there's a fine line you could overdo it you could underdo it the targeted areas necessarily are usually those shiny portions reflective surfaces contrasty ranges and if i zoom in on my image right here where that is if i enable it you see that you see all that glow it looks like film right it looks like halation i love the fact that we have this option we could click on the mask mode and now we could see what is being targeted and then adjust our sliders so we have different things that we could do if we have it to the right it's dialed back all the way to the left it's definitely doing something notice how even when i'm adding halation and changing things even the grain is changing so i'm saying like this it's crazy i love it we have our background gain this will adjust the the glow the brightness of the halation we have the smoothness so this is more like a feather to my knowledge you know like if i'm pushing it all the way to the right it's looking a little bit more tasteful all the way to the left it's looking a lot we have our local diffusion this is really cranking the amount of halation that we have in the image that's just crazy but doing a music video or something where you have creative control and you really want to push it you can let me dial it. let me punch back in real quick you could change the hue so if you want more of a red halation an orange or a yellow you can i like keeping it in the middle i've done a lot of comparisons with different film stock used in movies and whatnot and the warmer orangey push with a little red seems to be where it's at you have your blue compensation haven't really seen what this adjusts yet i haven't i played with it i just haven't noticed anything yet and then once again the impact so that's like the global blend i believe which is really dope. Halation is so hard to nail for those of you experienced colorists. Yeah. Amplify dials it back. I just love like on the pool ladder right there. It looks so good. Here we have our bloom. So instead of using ProMist filters, which I still use on my cameras or glimmer glass or whatever, we can use or add bloom. This is similar to like the glow feature in the Da Vinci effects panel. Just you could dial it in a lot differently and it's just overall a different look. So we have the highlight range. We have our source limiter. But what we need to do is amplify this a bit. So we got to boost that up. Maybe the diffusion if it wants to behave. So I'm just going to over accentuate everything. I'm just going to crank the amplify so you guys could really see what you could do with it. And it really has like that dreamy, whimsical look. You have a save light option. So I believe this just helps 
keep your highlights from clipping. You have a saturation option, and then you have your overall impact, which is like your global blend once again. So I think that's really cool. We're almost done, guys, I promise. Next, we have our vignette. I like to crank the feather all the way down, bring this down so you could see where it's targeting. Then you could adjust the size of your vignette. You could adjust it from a circle to an oval. And then you could adjust the center point, shift it up, down, left, right, stuff like that. After I'm done with it, I will push the feather all the way back up. And then tastefully, you could do your vignette. And I love using vignettes. Normally I'll do a reverse inner and outer and I'll pop out the center, darken the edges. So it just has that like 3D pop to it. Really looks good. It's one of my favorite things to do, but I love the fact that we could do it right here. And it just really draws your eyes into the center of the image now when we toggle both the vignette on and off. Moving on, <laughs> I know this has been long, but we have our film breath and our gate weave. These are filmic characteristics that happen more on like Super 8 or film video cameras, analog ones. Um, what happens is, as light's changing, as you're shooting on film, you are getting different colors and reflections, refractions of light. So what you could do is you could pick your frame for the period on both of them, and it's every three frames, one frame, you could go 120 frames down the one frame. And that's gonna be like how often it's adjusting. And then you could shift your exposure. Let me enable these. Toggle that one off first. Okay. So we have it enabled. We could adjust the exposure. We could do the tonal contrast. We could do the color. And we could do, say, one every frame it's changing. Let's just play it back. It's gonna look funky, but you're gonna notice colors changing, different things happening. Even check out my scopes. They're like twitching almost. So if you want to do this more tastefully, I'd say five frames. And now you're having this ever slow, slight change. And this is what you would really see on film cameras. So I love the fact that you could do that. Obviously, I over exaggerated it with cranking some of the options up, but just knowing that if you want to have that look, you have it there. And I think it's really cool. I've been using it a lot lately, paired with the gate weave. Now, a lot of you guys like to use the Super 8 frames, the overlays, that wiggle. It's got the golden sprocket from the Super 8 film that's glowing usually, but your image is usually not moving that same way. So if we put on auto zoom, so we have no, nothing moving from our edges and we enable it, what's gonna happen is you're gonna notice, even though this is on a smooth gimbal shot, as micro jitters, and you could adjust the horizontal and vertical movement, the rotation, and also the global blend once again. So if I play back, notice how it's wiggling, and you can li literally adjust it to Every three frames, she starts to wiggle. Every two frames, you could crank it up. Let's do that. Notice how, you see that? So if you were to drop an overlay with like a Super 8 and you added the gate weave and the film breath, now you're really selling it. Using a dehancer entirely, you're not just throwing on an overlay, putting on a Kodak LUT and some grain and calling it a day. You're really dialing in your filmic look to the needs that you want. So I think that's great to have this option. We have our IRE false color. It's cool just to use as reference. You have your full gray scale right here. You got your middle gray right there. Just cool to have, to drop on, to take a look at, see where your exposure is at. We have our output. So this is our final global blend for everything that we've done a LUT generator, if you wanna make a, a LUT with everything that we made, you can go ahead and generate the LUT 
You can make it a reference monitoring LUT for your camera monitor if you have an external or built-in LUTs. This way you could really get everything nailed in camera, which I think is an awesome option that they have. You have different options for LUT sizes, stuff like that. And lastly, just the quality of the playback and some profile updates and licensing info. So that wraps up today's video on how to use and what Dehancer film emulation plugin looks like, how it acts. I downloaded the free version. You guys could check the link in the description below if you wanna use a watermarked version and just play around with it and see if you like it before you purchase it. To my knowledge also, if you want certain features like just the bloom or the film stock, you don't have to purchase the full plugin and down the line if you wanted to, you would just have to pay the difference. I love the fact that they're doing that. Once again, Dehancer, thank you guys for sending me the key to give this review done. You have a fantastic product. I really would love to see the grain have a little bit more options, but besides that, I mean, this thing looks great. And let me know in the comments below if you saw some value to this video, if you were interested in buying this and whether or not this video helped make you make that decision. And until next time, guys, I'm Jason Anthony. Peace out.